This is a video about a new AI video to mockup service called Quick Magic. There are similar services out there and I've made videos about some of them in the past. The basic idea of video to mockup is that it can convert normal 2D video showing human movement into 3D skeletal animation data or in other words motion capture data. Generally the results from video to mockup are nice but not perfect. And Quick Magic also suffers from some limitations, but I have to say that I was impressed with the quality of the mockup it creates. I think it excels in two important areas. One, video to mockup tends to produce floaty and weightless motion, but the results from Quick Magic are grounded and stable. And it also seems to detect when a foot is planted on the ground better than other similar services. To get started with Quick Magic, you can go to quickmagic.ai and it is a paid service. You can see the pricing right here. And the cool thing is that there is a free tier which gives you 50 coins per month. 50 coins means 50 seconds of mockup. So it is not a lot, but more than enough to test the service. To be transparent, they gave me 1000 free points to really put their service to the test for this review. But this is not a promotional video. You'll get my honest opinion and I'll show you exactly the results that I got, the good and the bad. So you can click the launch quick magic button. And if you're new, you can create your account, which will automatically sign you up for the free tier. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. Once you're logged in, you have this interface with these three buttons on the left. And the top one, which we'll see right now, shows some example content and it's all dancing actions uh, which seems to be a very popular subject for video to mockup but quick magic can do more than that as you'll see in my examples a little bit later but here you can just click on any of these examples wait a second and it will show you this interface with the actual video which was used to create the motion capture playing in the background and a cg character playing in the foreground and as you can see, the results are quite nice. In here, you can change your uh, model preview to a man or to a woman. And down here, you can download your action. And it will give you a bunch of options. The default skeleton of Quick Magic, Miximo, which is another popular option, Unreal, BIP if you're a Max user, and VMD, which I'm not familiar with. Okay, so feel free to explore here. You can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. But let's take a look at how you can create your own motions based on your own videos. First, you need to go to Upload, and here click to upload your own video. And here I'm going to select this video which I downloaded from motionactor.co.jp and by the way, make sure that you read the tips here and that you understand them because following these rules can make the difference between getting a nice mockup and a bad one. So once you import the video, you can click on edit and that should allow you to trim the video, but currently it doesn't seem to work. So I'm not sure what's wrong, but I'll just go back to dashboard. And so I will need to trim the video manually in a video editing software. And because CG Dive is mostly a Blender channel, I'm going to show you how to do it in Blender. You can start Blender and choose video editing from the screen, or you can just press Ctrl N, video editing. Then drag and drop your footage here. This second track is the audio, I don't need it. And then I'll just adjust uh, this strip here and see what I have. So we have the motion from the side view and then from the front view and then again from another side view. And I think this one is the best. The front view can be hard to track for the AI system. So I'm going to go in here and then move my track by just dragging it. And then I'll go to frame zero and I'll drag it and make sure that it is exactly at the beginning of the action. And then go to the end of the action and that is frame 55, so I'll send the end of my animation to 55. Then you can set your output folder. I'll set it to this same folder here. And I'll give my animation a name. 
and then make sure that your file format is set to ffmpeg and from the encoding presets I'm going to choose mp4 and then go to render, render animation okay it's down now I can go back to quick magic get rid of this video and upload the new one okay now the video is exactly as long as I want so I don't need to edit it and another important point here is to choose your export setting and just like with the example content you can choose between BIP, Miximo, Unreal and VMD and just enable the ones that you want to work with. I like Miximo because it is a standard that I'm familiar with and I'm also interested in Unreal so I'm going to check these. You cannot uncheck default it will be always on and you can hover over the question marks and that will give you some info about each of these standards. The action section right now contains information about functions that are not yet implemented. As you can see it says in development so in the future you will be able to enable some of these features but right now it is not possible. All I can do now is press confirm and it tells me that this process is going to cost me two coins because the video itself was about two seconds. So one second video one coin very simple. I'll press confirm and wait for it to upload and now it will tell me upload successful and it will take me to the home screen and this is a dashboard for your own animations for the animations that you created as you can see I have a couple of them and the one that is currently processing has this icon over it once it is done processing this icon will disappear and you'll be able to view your animation so here I'm going to wait a couple of seconds while it is being processed um, this one shouldn't take long you can refresh your browser to check if it's done. So processing took a minute or so. Let's see what we got. I just have to click on this image here and the mockup will be loaded. And here we have this action which resembles the original video quite well in my opinion. And as I said in the beginning, notice how the action is quite grounded and also the foot is very stable. These are some of the biggest challenges for video to mockup. So I'm quite impressed with uh, quick magic. Again, you can switch to a man mannequin, it doesn't matter. But something new that you couldn't do in the example project is this 2D refinement. If you click on it, you'll be taken to the screen. And if you scrub here through the timeline, you'll see how the software has tracked your footage. I honestly don't understand all of these features that well yet. So I'm not going to go into this. But there is a tutorial by the creators of this software and I'm going to link to it. But here you can see that uh, on this frame, this leg here wasn't tracked properly. So I could try to adjust it manually. So this should be the heel. Something like this. And here on this frame, it also got it wrong. It should be something like this. So once you're done editing, you can click save and remake. And I believe then you have to click on recreate now. And then you'll have to wait for it to process again. Okay, processing done. I can click on the image again. And here is my probably improved motion. So this 2D refinement tool is nice. But the cool thing is that you tend to get nice results even without any manual work. So now let me show you some of the other tests that I did and I think they will show you what works and what doesn't in this software. So this first example is actually quite important to me. This is an actual project that I'm working on. This here is my friend Daryl. He made a performance for me for a short animation that we are working on. And I tried converting this to mockup with other services and honestly Quickmagic produced the best results. Again notice how grounded the action feels and also notice how stable the feet are. These results are quite impressive. And something else that I liked is this hand pose. None of the similar services was able to reproduce that that well. Let's look at other examples. This is a dance and I think Quick Magic captured it quite well. Here we have this backflip. Again, good results in my opinion. Here something that impressed me is um, first of all the squatting motion was captured nicely and notice this zoom of the camera. 
Normally that should get the AI confused, but here Quick Magic seems to understand what is happening and the character is perfectly stable. Very nice. Here we have some punching and kicking. Overall, not bad. Some of the kicks look not quite as in the video. I think tracking such motion from the front view is a little bit hard for the system. But overall, acceptable and usable results. This kick here came out nice as well, which shows that the quality of the input video is very important. Now let's look at some less than ideal examples. Here we have this um, hanging from a bar and I honestly didn't expect this to work. And yeah, the results are funny. Here is another one. So it seems like Quick Magic has trouble detecting when the hands are planted on the ground, which makes sense because usually it is the feet that are planted. So that is what the system is optimized for. So do not expect great results from such actions, although you could try to go into 2D refinement and try to tweak it manually. Maybe you'll be able to improve it, but I cannot guarantee it. And here is another example. Here we have a kick in slow motion. And obviously Quick Magic is having difficulties with this. So slow motion is another thing that I won't recommend. Just use a footage in normal speed and you could slow down the mockup itself in a 3D software such as Blender or Maya. So again, I could go to Blender and start a new video editing project. And here is a slow motion video that I used. I'm going to drag it and drop it into Blender and delete the audio. Here we have strip, retiming, set speed. So I'm going to set speed to like 1000%, which means 10 times faster. Which looks like normal speed. So let's render this out. 52 frames. I'll name my footage. Here, if I select the strip, I can actually go into the video view and press S to scale up this um, footage and G to move it. And I'm going to do something like this. And by having the subject bigger, the AI should have an easier time. So now I'm going to render it out and run it through Quick Magic again. I'll select Maximo and Unreal and press confirm. It will cost me another two points. And then I'll wait another minute or so. Okay, it's done. Let's check it out. There's still some problems with the leg, but much better. By the way, if you need more points, you can go in this area here, which shows your currently available points. And of course you can buy more points by clicking update, but also you can click on invite your friends and that will give you your own personal referral link and if you share it with somebody and they register through your link, then you will get some free points. And I will share my own link in the video description, so if you don't mind, please register using it. But of course, that is not my main motivation for making this video. Now, at the end, let's see how we can take these animations that we created in Quick Magic and bring them into Blender or any other 3D software such as 3ds Max, Maya, or Unreal Engine and so on. So I'll just choose one of the actions, click to activate it. And down here we have a download button. Just click on it and that will download your file. If you look at it, in this case, it contains two FBX files. If you remember the export options that we saw earlier, you will get one FBX file for each export option that you activated. So in this case, I have the default one and the Mixima one. I'm going to unzip them and start Blender, create a new general workspace, and then go to File, Import, FPX, and go to the folder where I unzip these files. Here I can actually shift click on all of them and click Import FPX. We have some empties that don't seem to do anything, so I'm going to delete them and then select one of the armatures and move it to the side. And here we have the same action on these two different armatures. I believe this one, yeah, this one is the Mixamo one. And you'll see that the bones are pointing in 
weird directions. So what you could do is select everything and delete it. And then again, go to import FBX, select your Mixamo armature, go to armature and enable automatic bone orientation. And again, import the FBX file. Now, actually this is the Mixamo one. So, so one more time, import FBX and I'll choose the default one and enable automatic bone orientation, import FBX. And here, if I hide the mesh, you'll see that the bones are now properly oriented. Now, if I hide the meshes here, you'll see that this is a standard Mixamo armature and you will be able to use this as any other mockup data. So I'm going to end the video here. If you want to learn how you can use this motion capture data and retarget it to an actual character, then you can watch my in-depth retargeting videos. I'm going to share a link to them. That's it for this video. Please click like, subscribe and check out academy.cgdive.com where I share my advanced rigging and animation tutorials.